Look at you, you little Eskimo lady in your in your oody. <laughs> I just got really calm all of a sudden. So. I love it. <laughs> Hello, hey BV. Hey Steph. All right. Oh, look at this. So many people. All right. Hello, hello. Oh, no, Miss Smith. Should I let her in? Oh, too late. <laughs> Hey. You have to put your mic on, love. I had a little, little, like, little tiny after school with my kids' brain dead fit with periods. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Um, all right. Look at this. Holy moly, I didn't expect this many. This is great. Indiana. You're seeing a lot of lot of ceilings too? Oh yeah, look, um, it's nice because I can check the in structural integrity of people's homes. Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of ceilings. Yeah, yeah, you can just kind of make sure that, you know, they're in a very stable environment, that, you know, they're safe, that no one's going to get really crushed. Getting... <laughs> I feel like I'm an expert. Oh God. And everyone's just going to have to bring a picture. Like my year 10 class is just going to have to bring a picture of their ceilings Ceiling. so I can identify them on the first day. Otherwise, I'm going to have no idea who they are. Yeah. I'm we, really, um, we only got them this semester, so I, I literally don't know what they look like. That's crazy. That's really crazy. <laughs> I've never seen some of their faces. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So that's, that's really weird. I'm not looking forward to this over Zoom thing. I kind of feel I can't put the background in because I haven't got a green screen and it says I haven't got the capacity to put a like what fake you, background. In. What do you mean put a background? Well, you know how we're supposed to put like a like, you know, obviously I'm in my daughter's bedroom with a tutus, but they said I'll try and see if you can get a, a Mary Me background. So what I tried to put for in it for parent teacher interviews. Ah, oh, I'm not doing that. I was like, oh they can just do <laughs> Julia, I was like, I'm, I'm not doing that. I was like, skid marked undies they're not mine they're my kids so no. you know what like we're doing parent teacher interviews that's that's good enough but i am spewing that i can't be in my pajamas like sipping mm, wine or something I like know. they'll see that so yeah because yeah so for for the year 12s information so the um the parent teacher interviews that we have to do for seven to ten we have to do them via zoom and not over over the phone um so yeah so last time when we did parent teacher interviews i had like three dogs just like sitting on top of me while i was in my pajamas um but i can't do that this time so disappointing um, yeah. I, have to, I have to put a top on um i can't just wear i know I, I, it was freezing remember it was freezing i had my robe mm -hmm. on i was like and i had a like a footstool now i have to like wear a a, a now nice I've got to look like this. Foot. Yeah, I can only wear pajama put, pants. It's disappointing. Put like I've got to put makeup on and oh, do my hair. I know. What a drainer. I've they got don't, like they don't think of gray. us. They don't think of us. Look at that. Look how grey I am. I dyed mine last night. I I, I bowed to the box dye. I look gave that, it I'm all grey. I'm grey. Yeah, it's it's look not that, good. All grey. Well, you can't tell from here. It just looks like you're blonde. It's fine. Oh, it's grey. You can see that, kids. You can see how black. Steph, you can see my grey, grey, can't you? No, miss. It's fine. I actually oh, don't think it looks yeah. bad, but it's oh, because God. you know we can't see you. We're on like poor quality video, so it's fine. All right. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, greetings, greetings. Um, lovely to have you here. Oh, Kuda's coming in. All right. So, I want to do a couple of questions. Does anyone have a particular question? that they want to have a go at. No, no preferences of particular questions. No one's had a question kind of sitting in the background thinking about, but haven't had a go at. Hey, Joshy. Hey, Nuni. No. All right, so I have up on the screen, I don't know why it's doing this. 
I have up on the screen um, the list of practice questions um, that we've given you. So if you can have a look and pick one from the ones that I've just projected. Anyone got a preference? Hello, anyone going to pick one? This is why Let's you're here. Let's have a look at the families one, the 38. 38. We, we had a, yeah, it'd be interesting. No? Hang on, I'm just reading it. Um, she wouldn't tell us a lot of stories, but when she did, we all listened. Compare the relationship that characters have with their families in seven stages of grieving and the longest memory. Yeah, it's all right. No. I'm happy to it's do that. Like one. It's not a great question. That's why mm. I like it. Like, it's a... It's actually like it's a very got, kind of like vague got, huh? question. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, don't yeah. have to write it, but we can look at it. I don't know. Yeah. What do you reckon? Actually, tell me to shut up. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that sounds good. There we go. Okay. I'm just choking. I've got hay fever again, and I haven't gone and got my hay fever tablets. <sighs> um, I know because I don't want to go out. Um, I was actually thinking maybe we do like a double quota and teach Ooh, them how yeah. to do the quotes. I don't mind a double quota. Yeah, I quite like them, but kids never pick them because they think it's hard when it's actually yeah, really easy. So, so with your double quotas, you mm -hmm. can either address some of it in the contention or the, the and then and then elaborate it. So get it get it over and done with in the start. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, you can you you basically just have to address them at some point, and they're like yeah. a bit of a kick in the right direction. The quotes kind of kick you in the right direction to what it's yeah. what the question's asking you. Yep. Um, all right, so let me just swap my shared screen to my PowerPoint. There we go. Did um, you pick up the new computer? Not yet. I'm doing it on Friday. I just haven't had time. Yep. The staff get new computers, guys. Ha, 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 ha. They're smaller. They're apparently, yeah, they're apparently a little bit better. Well, they'd have to be better yep. than this one because this one's rubbish. Oh, you got I got the, the Toshiba. Toshiba. Yeah, because yeah, I was an cool. idiot. Um, who didn't fill out the form. All right. So actually what I might do just before we get into this question, I might show you the two questions that I did with 12A today, just to talk about them overall. Um, so we did, we picked two that we kind of went, these are really like easy questions, like questions that you get that people go, oh, that's really easy, but it's really hard to get like a decent response out of them. Mm. And the whole purpose of them is to kind of have the majority sit in the middle, giving a very kind of standard answer. And then they make sure that they get their nice bell curve because most people will get a, you know, a five out of 10 answer, but not many people will get a 10 out of 10 answer. So what I did was I picked that kind of question and then showed people how to actually get a 10 out of 10 response from it. So this one, despite differences in time and location, the texts show that racism is always destructive, right? That's the kind of question they will give you on the exam because everyone can answer it. You know, everyone can say racism is always destructive. It is physically destructive. It's emotionally destructive. It's mentally destructive or like some form of, right? Um, a low end result will go racism is always destructive. Whitechapel dies, chapel dies, Boonie dies, right? That will be a low end response and they'll get like a three or four, right? A five or six will go, it's physically destructive. It's emotionally destructive. It's destructive to say generations or something like that, which, you know, is a decent response. It'll get you over 25. It'll kick you, you know, kick you your goal, but it's not, it's not super exciting. It's not going to be something that they go, oh, wow, that's really different and interesting and showing a depth of understanding. A higher end result will pick at this question and find every little kind of loophole or things to question in it. So the first thing that we did was we kind of went, oh, despite this difference in my time, uh, differences in time and location, we went, okay, well, maybe we could address that. And we could write a paragraph on that um, the time and location do mean that the racism is different. So the racism in the longest memory, 
you know, it's much more overt. You know, it's, it's, it's in your face. It's, you know, it's heavily supported by law. It's super violent, all that kind of stuff. The racism in seven stages of grieving is obviously different because historically it's similar to the Logos memory. So when they reflect on what it was like in colonization, we've got similarities, but because um, seven stages of grieving is different in time and location, it's in the modern day, um, the racism is much more subtle and underhanded and it's harder to condemn and put a finger on how to solve it. Right. So we actually addressed that bit of differences in time and location, whereas most people who get that question will just kind of dismiss that bit of the question because, you know, it just feels like a throwaway comment. OK, then we decided we would talk about that racism is, is always destructive. So we did a paragraph, uh, two paragraphs on it being a destructive force. We did one about destructive um destructive to people of color's future. And we talked about like the symbolism of the deaths of young people and how it's supposed to be symbolic of the fact that racism is damaging to people of color's future. So we did like a paragraph on that. And then we did a paragraph on mentally destructive. So talking about like, you know, um, the robbing of, of reading from chapel, you know, the robbing of intellect, uh, Whitechapel's disillusionment, uh, the story of the brother and the shame spiral he goes into. Um, and then we also go, oh, you could talk about socially destructive within that. Um, you know, that in the Murray Gets a Dress, everyone looks at the woman as like a, a criminal and encourages her to kind of look down on herself for being Aboriginal. Um, so, yeah, we kind of address the bit about destructive in those two paragraphs. And then you should always be wary of the word always. Always be wary of always because it's like a finite thing. So if you hear the word always or never, that's, that's, that's a giveaway. They want you to challenge it um, because nothing is always, right? Yes, Lisa just said, uh, Miss Smith said uh, culturally destructive as well. Definitely. So you could do that as well. Although, I mean, there are so many different destructives that you could talk about, but who has the time? They know that you can't cover everything. So don't feel obliged to cover everything. Okay. Um, but then the final paragraph, we challenged the idea of always. And we said, hmm, not always is it destructive. It's not always destructive, which is a hard thing to do. But we worked out we could prove it from the woman um, the woman herself is not destroyed by the story she's got to tell. So, um, Enoch and Mailman, they get this one woman to tell all of these stories about the history of her ancestors and, and her family and stuff like that. And yet she gets to the end of the story and she's not destroyed. She's not destructed. She actually ends with optimism, which tells us that racism isn't always destructive that people are able to be resilient and push through it, right? So that was one argument that we could talk about. Then we kind of went, well, chapel as well, like chapel's hopes and dreams should be shattered, but they're not. They're not shattered because, you know, he still is able to fall in love with Lydia despite his racism. Um, and then he has that moment with Mr. W where he says, yes, master, you know, I'm sorry, I deserve to be a slave but then we think it's destroyed, but then he follows the letter of the promise and not the spirit of it and continues to fall in love with Lydia. Thus, racism doesn't dis destroy him, you know? Um, and then Murray gets a dress. She um, is kind of always inferred that her, her colour is, is something that is negative in her life, but she keeps kind of saying, nice hair, beautiful black skin, white shiny teeth, despite the fact that really... Everything in her world is telling her, her that to hate that beautiful black skin, but she doesn't. Okay. Um, so that's how we kind of took a very generic question with a very like generic kind of, you know, answer and tried to kind of pimp it out 
and make it something that's going to make us stand out and show our complexity of thought. Um, Miss Smith says, could you say that racism cannot destroy culture? Yeah, you could. Well, you could definitely argue that. I think it would be harder with The Longest Memory, perhaps. Yeah. But definitely in Seven Sog, you could say, you know, despite, you know, um, the seven stages what? of of Aboriginal history, most of them try and wipe out Aboriginal history. It still doesn't. Yeah. Could you say it can't, bro it can't, it, 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 it's sort of different for uh, the longest memory, but in the seven stages, they're unable to break the will and the resilience and the culture. Yeah. And even though they dispossess them and they take everything from, there's this, the, the way that... This resilience to, of the average yeah, people. Yeah, the humour and the humour in um, reconciliation and the humour in um, uh, Murray Gets a Dress shows that they can overcome this racism almost by parody. Um, that it, it, Although it wipes them out in the, long, the, the longest memory, in seven stages it doesn't quite... Or am I stretching totally. it too much? No, no, I get it. Mm. But, yeah, so we kind of picked that question because we really wanted to... Talk, well, I really wanted to talk about how you can take a very average question, the kinds mm. of questions you find on the exam, and actually still get a 10 out of it. Whereas, yeah. you know, a lot of people will just shoot for that middle of the row. Racism is physically destructive, emotionally destructive, culturally destructive, whatever. They'll just list those three types of destruction. They won't address the always, and they won't address these differences in time and location. They'll just dismiss them. And they'll still do okay, but they're not going to go top tier. Miss, Miss yes, Miss Smith. We had this discussion today about that, and I came up that it's, it's the seven stages kind of like an evolutionary text that mm. um, the longest memory starts and it has an ending because of the nature of its novella. It has a different didactic purpose, but the the seven stages is that we're up to the third edition. So the first edition begin, ends with I can't remember what it ends with, but the second with this going back to the sobbing. Mm. The second edition ends with Rudd. This edition now ends with Bridges. So you get this time that it's it's um, got to keep going until um, there's no more racism and no, that kind really of idea that it's yeah. an evolutionary. Yeah. So you get this idea and that could fit in with the different types of text. One is meant to be added to and continually updated evolutionary where the other one is static. Yeah, definitely. I hadn't thought of it like that. That's a really good idea. Yeah, that like was it. probably the best thing I've said all year. Hands <laughs> down. But yeah, so we did that one. So I thought I would kind of talk you through that one and just, I guess, make you aware of, I guess, the type of questions that you'll get on the exam and how to make sure you pimp them out to enough where there's, you know, something that's going to make you stand out and be, you know, exceptional. Um, and then we did another one here as well. And I'll include that in, this one was about, uh, what is it? Despite the circumstances, there is, uh, there is still hope discussed. And we kind of went, okay, well, we could do a paragraph about the similarities of the circumstance, the differences in their circumstance, and then a paragraph on hope. Um, so we kind of focused not just on hope, but we also again address that bit at the start which seems like a really throwaway comment we kind of went well let's really focus on this despite their circumstances and talk about the circumstances mm -hmm. the reason we can do that is because we have this gorgeous word discuss when you've got the word discuss it doesn't mean you just have to blatantly agree or disagree it means discuss this statement what do you think about this statement what interests you about this statement? Mm. And most people will write an essay going, there are three types of hope. Hope about this, hope about that, hope about that. But a slightly better response will go, yes, there is hope. There's kind of hope in the longest memory, but it isn't as prominent. Um, and then maybe one, you know, looking at some other aspect of, or uh, looking at despair. Um, Whereas, yeah, not a lot of people will talk about the circumstances, which I think would be an interesting thing to mm. discuss. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's another, there's another plan there. Let's talk about this question, though. So this is another type of question that sometimes comes up on the exam where they give you two quotes. So we've got a quote from Seven Stages, a quote from Longest Memory, and then they go, to what extent... Do the two, uh, two texts suggest that racial discrimination may be overcome? Okay, 
So we have to read the two quotes and basically you have to find a place for these quotes within the essay somehow. And you use the quotes as almost like, like a kick in the right direction, that these, these are the kinds of things they want you to talk about. So you need to kind of find out why these two quotes are paired together, okay? So they wanted, uh, they wanted one of my brother's friends because some other black kid had done something wrong, okay? That's from um, Story of a Brother? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, Story um, of a Brother. And then he says like, you, they all look alike kind of thing. Um, and then yeah. you've got, are we to attribute to slaves all the qualities we credit to ourselves as human beings? I think not. Okay, so what's the similarity between these two quotes? Where do you see similarities? Steph, what do you reckon? Where do you see, what kind of similarities do you see? That it's focusing on people of colour. And like Good. they're treated. Both focusing on the treatment of people of colour. Um, particularly, like, they're both kind of, um, they're both quotes that look at the idea that, like, all people of colour, all black people are the same. Could you look at social Darwinism too, that superiority idea yeah. of, um, you know, white people are superior because they're more ev evolutionary, you know, that social Darwinism, intellectually we've evolved more kind of idea? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, and that word overcome, um, you could actually debate that and say um, that idea in the Virginian when it says not in my future or my generation. Um, yeah. And that thing about always being exploited, as long as there's people, there's the will to exploit. Yeah. Um, Sorry, jumping. Are, no, no, that's okay. Um, I'm just trying to write down each thought. So all people of colour are the same. Because remember, like, after this quote, it says, um, because some other black kid had done something wrong, um, that they, it says something like, um, and they all look the same. We all look the same or something. Um, and this is kind of saying, you know, should we attribute slaves all the qualities that we credit to ourselves as human beings, like that all slaves are nothing in comparison. Um, and then, um, oh, what we, I'm just trying to remember, Lise, what you said. Um, the idea of social Darwinism and the word <laughs> overcome. Yeah. That, that the word overcome in the Virginia, it says not in my future. And then he says something later on about, you know, as long as do you think slavery ever end and this persecution will ever end? He said, well, as long as there are people, there will always be exploitation or something like that. So this idea that it's inherent, it's part of human nature is to destroy, to subjugate and to exploit. So this idea that it may not be overcome, but it can be addressed. And life can be improved for all. I don't know. It's just a... No, that's all right. I'm just writing writing these ideas down. And often when you get questions like this, where you're kind of like, I've got to feel my way through it, um, this is a good way to do it, is just to start kind of jotting down the ideas that come to your head. Um, I'm just kind of reading as well. Da, 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 da. Both focus on the treatment of people of colour. Both... Uh, all people of colour are the same. Um, and it's, I guess, um, they both kind of reinforce that white people or, you know, like, yeah, that white people treat people of colour um, as lesser, isn't it? Mm. That, that they are somehow lesser. Um, and both of them look at that idea of shame because further down, I'm just on page 64, when it looks at the shame, and you could say that that same idea about the shame, that until they're able to deal with the shame and get over the shame, um, the whole kind of trauma and discrimination can't be addressed. So it's until people are ready to, you know, let go of the shame, release the trauma and start agitating for change, there's no chance of racial discrimination or race-based discrimination to be addressed or... Cool. Um, so what's... The actual question says, to what extent do the two texts suggest that racial discrimination may be overcome? Okay. Well, mm. I guess that's the question then. Maddie, 
What do you think? To what extent do the two texts suggest that racial discrimination can be overcome? What does Seven Sog say? Um, does it say racial discrimination can be overcome? I think there's that hope that it, they can overcome it. Good. That. Seven Sog, such, it's so finicky to type, isn't it? I know. <laughs> and you always get like, you get the apostrophe. I know, it does my head in. Um, has hope that Indigenous people um, and white Australians can overcome their differences. Um, what about the suitcase? Could you have a look at that idea that you've got to want to? want to um, be heard, to want to change? Ooh, hang on, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Angelica has just said, there's always people doing the chat instead of talking. Uh, could you say that without everyone working to overcome discrimination, it cannot be overcome? Yeah, definitely. Call to action in Seven Sog. Yeah, there's lots of these calls to action. Definitely. Nice one, Pit Pinty. She's good. She's good. Oh, she She's is. the only one that basically talks in my class too. So, you know, that's Where's nice. your brother? Why didn't he come? Does she have a brother in year 12? Yeah, he's in my class. Ah, there you go. So I didn't very, know this. Very close to the kept secret. I know I had her in homeroom when I was in Marceline. I, had, I didn't know she had a brother, twin brother, until this year. Yeah, he's. I what? try to keep it a secret. It's kind of shameful. What? Yeah, I need it's to, your I need to, shame. I need to Google this. <laughs> I need to get on Simon and see who this is. Um, I will. I will. Um, all right. Um, tell him you asked about him. Yeah, tell him. Tell yeah, him. good idea. I'm really interested now. I really want to see him now. Anyway, he's really at home um, watching telly, isn't he? I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to focus, but yeah, I can't stop thinking about it now. <laughs> so. Is it? Um, okay, so we've got for Seven Sog. We've got has hope that Indigenous and white white uh, Indigenous people and white Australians um, can overcome their differences. And then we've also got another point where we're saying without everyone working uh, to overcome discrimination, it can't be overcome. Yes, definitely. In Seven Sog, we also see that. Um, it's, um, you could argue that um, really Whitechapel doesn't want to change. He thinks he's okay. He's, he's accepted his lot. So there's no real hope that there's going to be change. Whereas Seven Stages, once that suitcase baby comes out, and the photographs are coming out. It's like, hey, we're demanding to be heard. So that that kind of um, more of a more of a chance that things can be rectified. Good. But you could say it's because of the setting. I didn't. Um, what's that book called? TLM. No, yeah. no, I don't remember what that actual book's called. Um, like, oh, I love you, y'all. <laughs> TLM. What, what are uh, we long memory. Um, could you also say like towards the end, he kind of. Except that maybe there might have been some kind of change after, like, his son has died and he's always talking yeah. about it. He kind of yeah. has that kind of... Oh, in forgetting he has that moment, doesn't he? Actually, this is this is Benito's moment, isn't it, Benito? I know you're there. I saw you come in. Have we got a kid called Benito? Yeah. He's like, in my class. Benito Mussolini? Yeah. Wow. But he's not Mussolini. He's no, just no, Benito. no. But Benito, geez, geez, like he's Benito, not Benito, say hi. Benito, I can see you there. Oh, he's walked away. He's walked away. And this was his <laughs> moment because he quoted this one today in class. So on page, if you want this little quote or this little little moment, um, it's just before Whitechapel dies and he talks about... Um, the talks, light in the dark? Yeah, he talks in yeah. metaphor about the passing of slavery and the best... The best quote is on 137 and he says, the master is the daylight and the slave is the night. And then it kind of goes on for a bit. You got to skip over it for a bit. And then it goes, um, slavery is a long day of the master over the slave. Um, but how long can the master's daylight continue to rule our nights? Yeah, yeah, he does. So he's yeah. actually questioning like whether it's ever going to pass. Uh, where, where, Sorry, like, shakes. Yeah, that it could possibly pass. Initially, and then it turns Macbethian with what's done is done. Yeah. Mm. Believes that, initially believes that slavery will never end. 
um, what does he say? De uh, paradise is death. Paradise is death. Um, and then at the end, there is a glimmer of hope, freedom. Yeah, when, when Whitechapel. And that uh, that that um, echoes his master. You know, when it, when um, Mr. Whitechapel is telling Lydia about the education yeah. that, and she he yeah. says one day, yeah. Yeah, and not this generation is the, um, the Virginian. So you've got all these hints that it might. Masters. Daylight. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> I sit there with my book and like that. Ruin. Yeah, rule. Rule. Our nights. Um, okay. So. This is what I mean. Sometimes when I get a question, I just throw stuff down where I'm like, these are all the thoughts that I have about this question. And, you know, then I start kind of pulling things from it. So, um, what have we got? Can you pull from images in the um, Seven Stages of Grief? Like yeah. that last chapter, that the, the added chapter in the 24th, mm -hmm. that image where the kid's on the dad's shoulders, could you kind of like say uh, that? See, that's, that's me. I got you that picture. That picture isn't, actually projected Isn't it on or there? anything no um but okay, she does right. say she does talk about it though she says um they've written sorry they've written sorry in the sky so she references that that moment i just found a picture of it and pulled it up could for you, you use that because i'm a i'm or a not. good person um, yeah definitely because it's definitely yeah. optimism isn't it and yeah. i'd probably say it goes really well with that without everyone working together to overcome um discrimination like people are working together in that scene. Um, they've written sorry in the sky. The sky, yeah. Yeah, and the, the fact that she says they, they have, as in white people. But she's also questioning it. She says, uh, so you got, you still got this resentment, this sort of yeah. underlying Ca it. She's cautious like, optimism. Cautious yeah. yeah, that's it. I like yeah, that. Where she says, um, I guess we can't go back now. And that, mm. I guess, kind of is that, that cautiousness that she's like, yeah. not quite willing to commit to the fact mm -hmm. that we're, we're all good, but I hope. Um, and she says, who would have thought it? Um, which kind of, again, is that cautiousness. Um, okay, so what do we say? We've got to work out what we're going to do in terms of arguments, remembering that we need to throw in these quotes somewhere. Um, we want to, da, 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 da. to what extent? So both of these quotes are kind of moments where white people are treating people of colour as lesser, right? Yes? Yes. So I think we need to do a paragraph on um, that racial discrimination is there. So if we kind of look at the keywords, so obviously a keyword is overcome um, racial discrimination, um, the extent. Mm. Um, so do we kind of do a paragraph addressing the idea of racial discrimination, that both texts show um, racial discrimination and the extent of it, kind of talking about how, you know, they both show um, the extent of racial discrimination boils down to um, being treated as lesser, as less yeah. worthy. Mm. Um, and then we perhaps do two paragraphs about overcome. Yeah, I like that. Yeah? Okay. Well, let's... Oh, I wish I could kind of put it side by side, but I can't. Uh, oh, well. We're just going to have to deal with it. Okay. So, the plan. The plan. All right. Um, so, argument one. Um, examining the... Ex uh, no. Yeah, it's the extent of racial discrimination. Both texts show that uh, 
Yes, and Richardson, could you show um, systemic, um, so institutionalization, so how it's in this, in this one, so how it goes through the whole of society and, and it stops and blocks the opportunities and therefore, um, and you look at the plantation that blocks their freedoms and therefore that's the extent. Yeah. That's well, remember, I've got to use those two quotes at some stage. Yeah. I've well, systemic could be the, the black kid had done something wrong. So throughout society, it's always blamed. Um, yeah. Or, or perhaps I could do a paragraph instead of doing like, yeah, maybe I could do a paragraph about, um, cause both of them are in, like you said, institutions, mm. um, reinforcing, like that's how bad the racism yeah. is that it's not mm. just individuals, that it's actually institutions reinforcing um, yeah. publicly reinforcing racism. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm excited now. Mm. Show that the racism in both these contexts is so bad. Obviously, I would use better language than this, but it's just the plan, so it's fine. Um, that the racism in both these contexts is so bad that it is reinforced so publicly, uh, reinforced publicly by institutions. Yeah? Yep. So that's the extent. So obviously then I can talk about um, the Virginian, Virginian, um, and I can use that quote and then I can then talk about um, the police with, um, with the brother. So Angelica's, Angelica's just said the invasion poem took our children to a safe place. Ah, yes. Why didn't that work? Seriously. Um, You'd think like after so many weeks of having to type everything, I would have got better at typing. And okay. also Murray gets anyways. a dress. Uh, and yeah. Laura, Murray, Murray gets a dress. She, um, you know, being followed just for being black. Ah, hang on. Did Angelica give me that quote? Because I bet she did. Yeah, she did. She gave you she um, took our children to a safe place. She's a good little she, girl. She is a good egg. I'm so glad I didn't murder her. She's been quite okay. useful through this. Um, all right. Uh, let me just jump back and steal these quotes. Copy and paste. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. What about mugshot? Yeah, and, and mugshot, yeah, that's very true. Because obviously you've got the police brutality stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, no, mugshot is, yeah, linked to the story of a brother because the story of a brother is him dying. Mugshot is it leading up well, to Well, is it, is it though? Is the brother... Um, is that, I don't know. That, is the brother Booney? I don't know. It could be, yeah. It could be. It could, it could be, be but yeah, it's a it could be separate. Experience. So yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. I suppose that message could be everybody knows somebody that's happened. This has happened yeah. too. But it is institutional. Yeah. yeah. Um, mugshot, uh, boonie. Um, I want that quote. I want that quote. The boonie Which gets one? pushed on the ground. Uh, in the course of the arrest, Bok went to the ground. Yeah, Yock went, yeah, he goes to the ground. Um, is that story of a brother or mugshot? Mugshot. By the time other police had arrived. Yeah, um, so in the course of the event, Vok went to the ground. It's, it doesn't explain what happened. No, uh, no, because the female one. Yeah, we realised that somehow Vok's got his head knocked and then they've thrown him in the divvy van and he's had, you know, He's had a seizure, or he's had something's happened to him. Um, no, we looked up. We looked up the um, court, 
court reports and the, the um, headlines from the time, and it says that he was abused and kicked by a female police officer. Ah, and, that's, well, and he actually died before he got to the station. Well, yeah, because it says in the course of the event, and it's like, what's the event? Like, what's actually happened? Like, it's so vague. It just says, in the course of the event, Bok went to the ground. We're going, okay, so... And, like, you have to kind of, because it's so ambiguous, you have to read between the lines and work out, well, I what guess that's there? where he's probably done, had something done to him where he's died. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, it was the female one that was just kicking him. So interesting stuff. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, so you could talk about that. Excellent. All right. So we've got our argument one sorted. And I love it. Um, let me just highlight it because, you know me, I love a bit of highlighting. Um, okay. Then we are going to, we said we were going to do two paragraphs on the overcoming, didn't we? I reckon we do a paragraph on, um, perhaps a paragraph on that they say that, that racism can be overcome. And then we do a paragraph about the fact that there's hesitancy in the voices. Mm. And then obviously in that third paragraph, we can talk about how like Seven Sog is obviously less hesitant than the longest memory however because of the context they're writing obviously for a current audience whereas um the longest memory is definitely like supposed to try to record historical a historical event rather than talking about something that's currently happening does that make sense mm. so you could kind of obviously have that contrast there that that's why these messages are slightly different yeah um, the sorry. different purpose for writing yeah I suppose I you could say the types of writing. One's a novella, so it has a different purpose yeah. in play. So, yeah. Definitely. Um, so, argument two, both texts uh, do voice optimism. Jeez, I'm getting old. I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I was, just, I was just waving to my husband who was carrying my oldest dog up the stairs because she can no longer go up the stairs by herself now. So this this gorgeous 30, 30 odd kilo creature needs to be carried upstairs now. Uh. <laughs> My 30 odd creature's watching telly. Yeah. Ah, nice, nice. Um, all right, both texts do voice optimism um, in their pieces. Yeah, I love that little pickup. I forgot about that little pickup of Whitechapel. That no, the one about the no, the light and the dark. Yeah. That was go great. For I forgot. To, I totally forgot about that. So mm -hmm. thanks, Benito. I know. He's not even here to hear it. Are you back yet, Benito? So, so Indy and Fadzi and Noogie, can you remind me of that little factoid in class on Friday? So let's steal that. Um... Okay. Okay. Um, Whitechapel says, "How long can the master's daylight continue?" Um, where else? In... That's so black diggers, isn't it? Like the yeah. day, the night, or the day. Yeah. yeah. Um, where else in the longest memory do we see optimism for the future? How else could we kind of go? There is hope. Chapel. Say, oh. Chapel. Yeah. Why so? Probably yeah. relationship with Lydia. Yeah, the, the relationship. The fact that after he was told not to do it, he still managed to find a way to Good. be with her. Love, yeah. love, love, love. Um, Good one, yeah. Good one, River. This, this sounds really cheesy. Their love finds a way. But you know what I mean. You can phrase it better than that. Don't try and sound like, you know, like some sort of sappy love song. Um, where is... There was some really good quotes Their love on that. Chapter 9 Their from love, Lydia. Their love survives. Their love endures. Their love endures. Their love endures. I like that too. Sorry? Someone had... Um, it. Chapter 9 from Lydia. Yeah? What about Chapter 9 from Lydia? Um... When they say he said it might be possible in the future, I look up to him as is that if that's chapter nine or ten. Isn't that chapter ten? No, it's chapter nine. Uh, Lydia's. Um, I would even say Lydia. Lydia kind of gives us hope, doesn't she? 
because yeah, she doesn't Virginia. care about his race. No. She and in fact, care. she says she's Ask willing to race. be black. Yeah. Let, so let's go Lydia's attitude towards Chapel's race. Um, and I'm sure we can find things in Chapter 9 to give us that. I love you, Chapel. Yeah. That's a or, quote, when she, or when she says, I realised I'm in love with a boy three years my junior. I realised I'm in love with a slave. Like, she's more shocked that she's in love with someone that's three years younger than her than she is shocked that she's in love with a slave. She's like, oh, no, he's younger than me. That's so bad. Uh, but he's also a slave and I am a white woman. And her defiance, even against her parents, you know, their, their expectations could be shown as, you know, hope. That, yeah. You know, out of all of this misery, there's still someone agitating on their behalf to change. Yeah. And even her, her, um, her sorry, I'm just grabbing my charger, her letters to the Virginian as well. Like that she writes these letters to the Virginian that she's fighting doesn't she also like never mention the shape of uh, the color of his skin? Just like as a human, yeah. like she classifies him as a human. So she never says like he's dark skin or whatever. That she says it like as just a person. Yeah, good. The only time she ever calls him a slave is says I'm in love with a slave. Yeah. Or Chapel, I wish I were black and you were white. Um, yeah. It's only time. Yeah. Oh, her wish to be black. Yep. Um. Yeah, so I think Lydia is supposed to kind of definitely give us hope that, that, and I think, actually, I think we talked about this a little bit in my class where it's the young people that are the hope. Mm -hmm. The young people yeah, are the oh, hope. Definitely. It's, not, it's not the oldies, it's the young people. It's Chapel and Lydia and great granddaughter. And even in the, the, te the um, seven stages, the woman is a young woman. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, she's, she's the every, hope. Yeah. You know, seven stages of grieving does also have people like Nana and that turning up at the marches and stuff like that. But ultimately, it seems like it's the young people that are the yeah, hope. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, Miss, can yes, you also darling. talk about the Virginian? Yeah. How so? Like how it says, um, I said the world was changing rapidly. 150 years of slavery was a long time. Yeah, that, really. actually, yeah, because he even admits, so you could say even, even, um, what are they called? The what are the opposite to a abolitionists? To pro abolitionists of people. Yeah. The Do they have a, Yeah. I think they're uh, just called the pro-slavers, yeah. The, the pro-slavery pro pro sure. voices um, admit that slavery can't last forever. Um, but then so he does say it'll be replaced with something else, another for form of slavery. Yeah, but and like, he, exploits that, yeah. he still admits that it will change, that something will yeah. change. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, I like that because it's actually, you know, like it reinforces that there is optimism. And I think a lot of people who answer this question will say there is no hope in the longest memory. Yeah. Um, whereas we're kind of saying, no, there's actually way more hope than you think there is. Initially, on an initial reading, you do feel like there's no hope, but you realise that mm, there is hope. It's just small and it's quiet, but it's, but still, it's still pushing through. Yeah. It's resilient. And even the death of, even the death of the chapels, the catalyst for change, so even though it's a tragic event, if he hadn't have died, there may never have been any hope. So even his, mm. in his death, he's provided hope for future generations. Definitely. Um, so hang on. So we've got the glimmer of hope with Whitechapel, Lydia. Oh, we've done all this stuff about, um, about the longest memory. Let's have a look at Seven Sog. What have we got? Um, has so hope, oh, that's right, the flag, and they've written sorry in the sky, yeah? Yep. You? Could you also say the way that Whitechapel classifies the two types of slaves and how Chapel is a second type, I think it was? Chapel's the first type of slave who doesn't learn. Chapel's the first type. Yeah. Could you say like, the way they classifies that is kind of also saying that like Chapel's relent not relentless, but like doesn't really, it has hope in a way? I don't know if it's voiced as hope. Like, I don't think Whitechapel would see it as hope. 
Um, but we see it as hope. We see it as okay. Whitechapel is resilient. So you could use it, but it'd just be a harder argument to kind of go, we as the reader are supposed to interpret that as that Chapel has fight in him. You know, he's not like Whitechapel who has no fight left. Um, he's resilient. Um, he still has that youth um, that can fight. Um, a um, miss. Yes, my darling. Could you say in Murray Gets a Dress how she says, like, nice hair, black, beautiful skin and white shiny teeth is hope because she's resisting? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Definitely. Murray Gets a Dress. A woman. I don't know if you're finding this, Miss Smith, but yeah. I'm getting a lot of um, misspells of woman and it kills me. Woman and women, yes. Yeah. The woo, the woo man. We're talking about woo mans, not woo women men's. Is plural. Woman is singular. Yeah, I know, but th they don't do it. They don't do it. They just call us all women, singular, plural, yeah. whatever. But they never make that mistake if it was a man. They never go no. men's. No. Because <sighs> women have been taught throughout history to be subservient. Triggered. Uh, <laughs> all right. Murray gets a dress. The woman, the woo man, um, is uh, resilient. Or the man with the womb. Yes. See what you did there. Uh, yeah. Resilient. Oh, God. I know. Resilient. I can't type. Oh. I'm so bad. It's really showing up my bad typing skills. Oh, it's awful. And I'm not getting better. That's what's really irritating no. me. Because um, our brains think faster than our fingers. Yeah, rubbish. Uh, the woman is resilient to um, the negative, um, the negative connotations that come with her skin. And the favorite, the, 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 the way that she can bring humour into it too is so. Um, so resilient and you know it shows you that if they can get over that they can almost get over anything beautiful black skin white shiny oh. um yeah that she, you know because she keeps repeating that the repetition of it tells us that she's deliberately proud yeah. Um, yeah and deliberately uh resisting people telling her that she shouldn't be proud of her skin. And you don't you see know. that pride in um, uh, The Longest Memory, but no. I think that's not the whole Well, you see it in Great Granddaughter. Part. You see it yeah. in Great Granddaughter when she kisses the ground and she says that, it, you know, that it tastes, you know, like she could like eat home, it. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Um, so she has it, but everybody else doesn't seem to. Um, okay, so there's that. Um, and obviously we could do the, um, the walking over bridges scene. Yeah. And the whole motive of a bridge is bridging the gap, bridging the distance between the white and the black and bridging our differences. Maybe. Yeah. Or... Yep. Sorry in the sky. Sorry. I'm just jotting down. So walking over bridges scene, you know, the symbolism of walking over bridges and the sorry in the sky that she sees the sorry in the sky. Opening um, up the is... suitcase. Yeah, ah, the opening of the suitcase. I know there's so many good points. Uh, okay. Um, so then let's do argument three. I'm just cautious of the time. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'll go and feed my baby. Oh, my babies get fed later. Um, but hey, they eat. Um, and then the last paragraph we said we were going to do was about like cautious, didn't we? That they were hesitant to really commit to like blind optimism. So argument three, not blindly optimistic. Uh, very cautious. Yeah, that it's very cautious optimism. Yeah. Um, so, oh gosh, I'm running out of room. Size down, size down. Okay, let's, oh no, that's way too small. 16. Okay. All right. Um, so how can I show that they are cautiously optimistic, that they are not blindly optimistic? Um, 
who am I going to pick oh, on? Oh, I get that in my class too. Everyone just goes silent. I know. Who am I going to pick on? Let's go with Jordan. Jordy, tell me, how do I know that, that either of these texts are not blindly optimistic? Um, with the longest memory, could you say that? Whitechapel was like cautious because he still wanted to be like the good slave and he's still like... Good, yeah. So like he still knew that there was hope. Kind of. Hang on, can you repeat yourself? Sorry, my brain fluffed. Um, that like Chapel, uh, White Chapel, like didn't he had no intentions of doing anything because like he wanted to be like a good slave and he wanted to. Does that kind of say? Oh yeah, I suppose he's cautious because he doesn't he doesn't want to get like further retribution or anything like that. Well, like, Is that what you that mean? That hope and like that something will change eventually. Yeah. Okay. So, um, White Chapel talks about Pinty's come through with a good one. Oh, excellent. We're not fighting, we're grieving. Good. Hang on. Um, eventually. Um, uh, uh, doesn't see it here and now. Um, like, you know, like he, he kind of says, you know, it's not here and now kind of thing. Uh, what's the quote? Um, how long can the master's daylight rule out? You could go back to that quote and it kind of says, you know, that it won't be forever but it doesn't kind of mean right now. Um, is it? Um, here we go. Nor, nor can the master hope to rule the day and night along with it forever. Yeah. Um, you know, by, by saying forever, he's like, it's not going to happen right now. Yeah. Uh, nor can the master... Hope to rule over the day and night ever. And yeah, the use of the word forever tells us that he sees it still as as a while off. Excellent. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, not so my, not not my future. Not in my future. So Mr. Whitechapel does acknowledge that it's going to change, but not for a very long time. Yeah. Or not and, and then Mr. Um, w says yeah what what does he say not in oh. patient oh hang on I'll, it's chapter nine it's chapter um let me get it chapter yes. nine lydia he said it might be possible in the future might be possible future yep and in the virginian about the a question about the uh, end of slavery he says not in this generation but that still gets hope. He doesn't say no, not ever. Um, just getting an exact quote. Um, all right. The Virginian. And that, this would be a really good response because we're really like nitpicking the words. Yeah. And they like it when you kind of really drill down into like quotes and stuff. They really like that. Um, Ange has said, we're not fighting, we're grieving. That's yep. the quote that she gave, which is really good because it kind of shows um, that, you know, that the fight isn't over, right? Um, that they still have to fight for it. Um, understands that the fight isn't over for equality. And then yeah. Steph, I oh, said sorry. not in. Yep. I said not in our lifetime, nor that of, that of our children. But he doesn't say no. He just says in our lifetime or that of our children. Okay. So that's that's Mr. W, isn't it? No, no, no. That's the editorial. Oh, the editorial. Not in our lifetime. Yep. And not what that of our and, and nor that of our children. But he said it's still possible. It doesn't say ever. Yeah. Good. Yep. Um, and then Steph said um, the the quote where it says, I guess we can't go back now. Um, you know, there's those qualifiers. Yeah. That's, that's what a qualifier, like a qualifier is where you kind of, you know, where you say, I guess. And it suggests Which, that you can only move forward. The impetus is forward yeah. rather than back. Moving qualifier on. suggests... Um, 
doubt, doesn't it? The qualifier suggests doubt. When you say, I guess we can't do that, it's implying that there's doubt there, that maybe we can. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it certainly, yeah, implies doubt. Um, and obviously you could use the bit where she says, who would have thought, which implies that, well, you know, I wouldn't have thought that, that you know, white people would care. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a really great plan. I love this one, actually. I quite, good, I quite it? like it. I quite like yeah. it a lot. Go team. Um, so there's this lovely plan that you can take advantage of and go and write and enjoy um, with all of the, the detail. And there is also the plan that I talked about with racism always destructive. I'll send you that one as well. And there's another one about hope. Um, so I'm going to send you those three plans so that you guys can have a look at them and use them to your heart's content. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Um, any questions, queries, concerns that people want to ask while we're here? Crickets. <laughs> All right, well, have a gorgeous afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Go and get those last Thanks. little bits of sunshine and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye, Thank Julian. You. No worries. Bye. Thanks for letting me join in. No, no worries. No worries. Because I, I, I did that in class and it was good mm -hmm. to see. I think four of my kids turned up. It was really good to see that because I was like, oh, yeah. I hope Miss Richardson has a look at this because this is really interesting because we looked at a paragraph and I purposely made it really long and awful, like some bits of it so that they could actually see how um, to improve it. The, yeah. How, what would you cut out? And mm. we were struggling, like they were struggling to find anything optimistic and I, I didn't want to give it to them mm. straight out. I wanted them to think about it. Like at the moment it's frustrating because they want me to do everything and I'm like, yeah, but um, no, it was good. I enjoyed that. Thank you. No, no worries. Um, and I think that was a good one to do as well, you know, to kind of go, turn it on its head. Don't give them the answer that they're expecting. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, like in that, I think the, ex you know, the expected, the mid range answer will be SOG is, seven SOG is, is optimistic. And, um, and yeah, longest memory the is not. not. I love that one. I so forgot about the chapel quote, you know, the dark, yeah. the, the, the light. Yeah. The white I chapel just, quote. Yeah. I think I had that with my black diggers quote. So I just didn't look at it and I forgot totally about it. But um, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. I'll let you go. No, no, no worries. Thank no you. No worries at all. Bye. Bye.